All right, so we talk about phase that ciphers like height and present, sorry, height and clefia. Now we are moving on to present, which is an SPN cipher, substitution permutation network. So an SPN cipher consists of three layers. Key addition, here you combine the key material with the plain text. Substitution layer provides confusion. Permutation layer provides diffusion. Block ciphers like AES and present are examples of SPN. So let me show you the general picture of a SPN cipher. So here you have the plain text block and your one round consists of substitution, permutation and round key. So if you write the round key layer at the end, then you have to put a initial at round key operation. But you can also say that this is my first round this is my second round and so on. So you can put a final at round key at the end, okay? So you have a secret key here. From the secret key, you put it in the key schedule and provide round keys. This material is used in the round, at round key session. So he, he, this way you provide cipher text block. So a person who wants to decrypt it must go from here to here. So direction of the arrow changes. So you have to apply inverse of all of these operations. So sometimes you might need to implement the inverse operations, which might require more area in the hardware, okay? So also you need to understand that with this method, so we always assume that ciphertext always leaks because the communication channel is insecure, right? So we always assume that the uh, enemy knows the ciphertext block. But knowing this doesn't allow them to go to plain text even though they know every ins inside detail of the algorithm, even at the first step, they have to exhort it with the round key, but they don't know it. So they cannot obtain the intermediate values. Even if they somehow know the plain text and the corresponding cipher text, knowing this input and the output doesn't allow them to get key value from this. Because at the beginning and at the end, you perform an operation that uses the secret key information. So this prevents them to obtain intermediate values. This is the main idea behind substitution permutation networks. The most famous one is AES, designed by John Damon and Vincent Raymond, standardized in 2001 by NIST, winner of the AES competition. There were other finalists like Serpent, Twofish, RC6, and Mars. These are generally included in some crypto libraries like OpenSSL, and they are not broken yet. In the AES, we have a 128 bits block size. Key length depends on the user choice and depending on the key length, the number of runs increases and known attacks are ineffective. So we assume that AES is secure and good in almost every platform, but due to a specific reason, for instance, if you are using a constraint device, if AES is not enough for you, then we recommend use, you to use a lightweight algorithm, okay? So present is a good example for a lightweight SPN cipher. So this is this picture shows you one round of present, okay? So if you look at the details, it has a block size of 64 bits. So each line in this picture actually represents a single bit. Key length can be 80 bit or 128 bits, depends on the user. You can choose whatever you want. But uh, choosing this one, doesn't affect the performance much. So if you don't have a very specific reason, don't choose 8 bit key, just use 128 bit key, okay? Round number is fixed for both scenarios, which is 31. So take this picture and repeat it 31 times. At the end, here put in another key XOR like this one, and then you have the present cipher. So let's look at the details. From this key, you produce round keys 64 bits. So you exhort it with your input, okay? And I will show you the key schedule in the following slides. So after key addition layer, you have the confusion layer, which is application of an S box 16 times in parallel. So these S boxes are the same and are provided with this table, okay? So it has a four bit input, and four bit output. So with four bits, you can represent 16 different values. So this 
SBox actually takes a 4-bit input and provides a different output, okay? So assume that your input is all zeros. In the hexadecimal notation, it is zero, and the output is C. C means 12 in the integer notation, but in bit notation, if you consider the rightmost bit to be the least significant bit, then 12 means one, one, zero, zero. Okay, so you should be familiar with bit notation and you know modular arithmetic in uh, modulo two. Okay, so four bits are replaced with four bits. Here you provide confusion, but you know, uh, this S box on the FX is four bit, this S box on the FX is four bit. So there's no relation between the bits. So there isn't diffusion at this point yet. This is why you have the final layer called permutation layer, where you switch the places of the bits. So zero bit stays here the same. So in the next round, it will be here. But the first bit goes here to the position 16. So in the next round, it will go and be the first input of the S4, okay? This one goes to S8 and the other one goes to S12. So this way, if you make a small change in the input here on the, at the single bits, three or four rounds later, this change will affect all of the outputs of 16 S boxes. That is the idea. This is how you choose the permutation, okay? So from a single picture, we understand the whole cipher, but I did haven't mentioned one thing that is the key schedule. So if I choose an 80-bit key, what will be my 64-bit round keys? So it is explained in this part. So assume that you have an 80-bit master key. So we represent bits counting from uh, zero to at the rightmost part and seven to nine at the leftmost part, okay? So let's represent 80 bits like this. So you store it in a register, 80-bit register. Use the leftmost 64 bits like here as your first round key, okay? Now you update this 80-bit register with respect to these operations. First, you rotate it 19 bits to the right, okay? So 19 bits here becomes K0 here. Then you perform an S-box operation to the leftmost four bits. Then you add a round counter. Round counter is actually the number of the current round. So in the first round, it is one. So in the bitwise notation, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. In the 31st round, in the final round, if you round 31 is in the binary notation, it becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so it affects five bits at most. So this key schedule is represented in this picture. So initially you have an 80-bit master key. You use the leftmost 64 bits at your round key I. Then you modify this register by you know uh, rotating 19 bits to the right. So this 19 goes here. Then you perform the S-box operation on the new leftmost four bits and you add the round counter to these five bits. And now this leftmost 64 bits becomes your next round key. This way you provide 31. And actually with the starting zero round, you obtain 32 64 bit round keys, okay? I will show an example in a minute. But let me first show you the key schedule of 128 bit key. You again put it into a register, this time 128 bits. Your leftmost 64 bit again is your round key. Now you rotate it 67 bits to the right instead of 19. You perform S-box operation to the leftmost four bits, but also the second leftmost four bits. So you apply S-box device on, uh, in the 80 bits key schedule, we applied the S-box once, here we are using twice. So this is the only thing that slows you down if you move from 80 bit to 128 bits. Then you also add the round counter. So of course you might say that, okay, if I'm only performing one more S-box operation, I don't get much of a slowdown. Maybe there is no point of using 80 bit secret keys, but maybe your device is so small that Storing a 128-bit value would be very costly for you, and you might choose to store an 
storing 80 bit key. But of course, if you use that, you need to use 80 bit key only if you need security for a very, very short time, maybe for a few hours. Okay. If you want long term security, you have to use 128 bit key. Okay. So let me show you how the key schedule works. Assume that I chose my, my 80 bit secret key as all zeros. So there are 20 zeros here because I'm using the hexadecimal notation. All of them represents four bits. So recall that initially I used the leftmost 64 bits as my first round key, right? Since if it is all zeros, leftmost 64 bits are also zeros, right? Then I modify this. What I do is rotate it 19 bits to the right. And if you rotate all zeros, nothing changes. It is still all zeros. Then I apply SBox operation to the leftmost four bits. Recall the SBox operation. If the input is zero, the output is C. Okay, so this is why you get this output as the second round key. Of course, we also add the uh, round constant, but it doesn't affect this part. But in the following, in the next round, I rotated 19 bits, you know, perform the SBox operation, perform a round key XOR. So at this point, I get this. Job. You keep doing this. And you get at the RAM key this one. As you can see, there are still a lot of zeros. I'm trying to show you that the confusion and diffusion in the key schedule is really bad, so that when you start with all zeros, you still have many zeros here. Okay. This happens when you design something really lightweight. Okay. So this is why the cipher is actually 31 runs. Okay, you cannot design such a cipher and say that 10 runs is enough because people can break it because it generally does not provide enough confusion and diffusion, okay? So if you continue in this way, this is all of the round keys that you are going to obtain. This is important because if you want to implement present, once you implement the key schedule, you can use these numbers as your test vectors. So you can again take all zero key pro, uh, pro, uh, produce the round keys and check them if they matches this one. If they don't match, then this means that you made an implementation error. Okay, and most probably you will do because implementing a block cipher in your first trial is a very hard thing. I haven't seen anybody that does it, so don't be discouraged if you you know cannot obtain these numbers. Okay, this was for the round keys. Okay, but let's look at an Encryption. So assume that I choose a 64 bit block, again, all zeros. I choose the key like in the previous slide. If I perform encryption after the first round, the output becomes this. So 32 ones, 32 zeros. So let's go back to the main picture and see why this happens. Okay. Let's go back to the picture of present. Here I started with all zeros. And my first round key is all zero. So after this XOR, I have all zeros before the S boxes. S boxes map zero to C. So after this point, I have C, 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 and 16 Cs. I told you that C is one, one, zero, zero in the bit notation. But permutation actually takes this bit and leaves it here. So zero here stays here. And this bit is also zero. It goes here. This bit is one, it goes here. And this bit is one, it goes here. So if you divide the picture from the middle, this permutation will map the rightmost two bits to the right part of this picture. So zeros will be on the right part, and these ones will be on the left part. So this is why we will end up with 32 ones here and 32 zeros here. This is why in this picture, you see this one, okay? If you continue this way, you see that zeros are starting to disappear and you started to have better diffusion and confusion after a few rounds. But of course, again, this is not enough to say that this many operations is secure because this most probably will pass some statistical randomness tests but it will not be enough. This is why you apply 31 times. After the end of 31 rounds, 
you XOR it with your last round key and obtain the cipher textbook. So this is how the encryption is done by Prezan. So you can go home and you know implement this algorithm and you can start encrypting all of your files in your computer. And maybe from this point on, instead of sending an email attachment directly as a plain text, you know, you can encrypt it with this algorithm and give the secret key to your friend in a secure way and you know start communicating in a uh, encrypted way or you know if you want to put a file to Dropbox you can first encrypt it and then put it and obtain security okay so in the proposal they show some results hardware performance of some block ciphers and stream ciphers again the logic processor is some um, are using different technologies so comparing them might not be fair but they show the area required and they show that present requires less than 2000 gates, you know, compared to others, this is a really good result. And they show that it says enough throughput, not the best maybe, but once you compare it with the area and throughput, present is really good. Because we use very simple operations, so it is not surprising. Here we have some stream ciphers. Uh, they also use 80-bit keys uh, and they, for instance, green requires smaller area, but also provides half the speed of present as so. Again, this picture from is 2007 and they propose present, okay? So we do to new optimizations or better processors and so on, we might get better results at the end. 